Okay, first of all, we have square root functions. Okay, square root functions. Again, when we're talking about the domain, we're looking for where is there an issue if there is an issue. So the square roots, when you're plugging in numbers, you're going to have an issue if what's under the square root is negative. Okay, so to figure out your domain for square roots, you take what is under the square root. I don't know why I put an X right there. Under the square root, it's got to be greater than or equal to 0. Solve for X. Okay, what's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0, and you solve for X. Now, cube roots, their domain, can we take cube roots of negative numbers? Yeah, we can. You can take the cube root of a negative number. You can take the cube root of a positive number. You can take the cube root of any number. So the domain of a cube root is all real numbers. So is the range. And we talked about this. We, we did these functions fairly recently. We have talked about this part, but I just wanted to remind you of it. Okay? Um, so the domain and range of cube roots, all real numbers. Every single time, those are easy. Square roots are the ones with exceptions. So, with square roots, we have two scenarios. Okay, we have two scenarios when we're talking about the range. Okay, either your cube root is going to be, um, it's going to look like this. Okay, that means that it was a positive square root and it had a constant on the end. So, its range is going to be from that constant to positive infinity. That's going to be its range. Or, sometimes we had square roots that looked like this, and that happened when the, uh, no, uh, there was a negative in front of the square root. So that range would be from negative infinity to that constant that was on the end. Okay, again, we've talked about this, but this is just a little refresher for you. Okay, so you need to look at what's, is the square root positive or negative? If it's positive, then it's increasing. So it's from that constant number up. If it's a negative in front of the square root, then it's decreasing. So you've got from negative infinity up to that constant number. So number 25 there on your worksheet, it is a square root. So for the domain, we take what's under the square root set it greater than or equal to 0, and solve for x. So our domain is x is greater than or equal to 2. So in interval notation, that would be from 2 to infinity. All x values greater than or equal to 2. Make sure you have the square brackets with the 2 and the parentheses with the infinity. For the range, it is a positive square root. So it's going up to infinity, and uh, the number on the end is positive 2. So in this case, the domain and range are the same thing. Now, one's describing x values, one's describing y values, but it's the same set of numbers. That doesn't happen a ton, but every once in a while it does. Now, number 30 is cube root. You do not have to do any work. You just need to remember that the domain and range are always all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity in interval notation. 